Hi everyone, welcome to APTA Live, sharing the profession on social media. My name is Casey and I'm the current Director of Communications for the APTA Student Engagement Group and I'll be your host for this evening. I'll give our guests a chance to introduce themselves and give a little bit about their background uh, before we start top talking about our topic this evening. Um, but for everybody tuning in, if you'd like to introduce yourselves in the comments, wherever you are uh, streaming from, and tell us what year you are, what school you're attending, that would be great. If you'd like to spread the word about this event and tell people what you think and continue the conversation, use the hashtag APTA Live. And if you don't follow us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at APTA Students and on Facebook and Instagram at APTA Student Members. If you have any questions throughout the discussion for our panelists, please drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to make sure we answer them. We'd love to hear your thoughts throughout, so please comment at any time. All right, so now let's get to our panelists. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Lena Malik. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you became a PT, what you currently do. Thank you, Casey. Hi, everyone. My name is Lita. I became a PT about, oh God, where are we? About six years ago. <laughs> um, what led me here was a lifetime of playing volleyball and being really active, like many, um, going to undergrad and having a focus on exercise and sports science and working with the athletic training room and ultimately the fitness industry and falling in love with exercise as medicine. So that led me to become a physical therapist. Since then, I've been focused on outpatient physical therapy, specifically sports and orthopedics. And then as of a few years now, I'm a sports clinical specialist with more time in youth, youth elite, and pro sports medicine. So that's where I'm at now. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Dr. Marvin Jacob, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hey, guys. Good afternoon. My name is Marvin Jacob. Uh, I'm based out of Houston, Texas. So I became a physical therapist because like many, I got injured throughout the years and physical therapists were the people who got me better. Um, and I fell in love with the field as I got into the program at school. Uh, I went to Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas, graduated 2017, um, and since then have been working in outpatient sports and orthopedics. Um, and my passion is to work with the athlete uh, at, of all ages, and I also lecture for our sports residency program as well. Thank you both so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, so let's go ahead and start with some questions. Again, anybody who is watching online, um, just if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'd be happy to ask our guests. Um, so the first question I have, um, I'll start with Dr. Malik. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you started using social media and which platforms you're currently on? Uh, yeah, that was a funny story. I never, I didn't mean to start social media. Actually, when I started, it was, I started in 2020, the pandemic hit. Um, I was, I didn't have work anymore as a result of clinic doors closing and clinics downsizing. And so my shift was after a period of waiting with no luck and no work available to just start my own virtual practice. And so in an effort to help share my own treatment style and like have a link to my website and that kind of thing, develop um, leads, I started sharing a little bit on, on social media, primarily Instagram and Facebook. And slowly and surely, I found that that had an, had an opportunity to grow and reach more people. So I started shifting my content. At that point, I had gone from being more of a sports orthopedic to more general ortho wellness because with the pandemic, there were no more sports, everything was canceled, elective surgeries were canceled, and I, being in the Bay Area near San Francisco, everyone I knew was ultimately working from home, no gyms, no anything. So that's what kind of catapulted me into social media, and I've been there ever since. So we're coming up on, oh my gosh, can't believe it's been two years, but yeah, that's my background on that. Great. And Marvin, if you'd like to also answer that same question about how you kind of got started with social media. Um, so I've had, you know, since before the pandemic, I've had a bunch of friends who did a lot on Instagram, on TikTok. Some of my friends, they were doing it before even TikTok was a, a big thing, right? Because I feel like the pandemic boosted the popularity of TikTok. And um, I was like, ah, I don't know, I'm not really comfortable with all that, putting myself out on social media like that, doing whether it's exercise, uh, you know, demonstrations or skits or whatever. Um, but I realized once I started doing it I, around the same time, like during COVID, 
whether it was showing some ex exercise uh, instruction or doing some skits. Well, I didn't do the dances, but I did pretty much everything else. Um, I figured like, you know, I, it, it, I realized that it was something that um, I really liked. I felt like I could, you know, do it pretty well as far as the skits and acting goes. Um, so it was one of those things where I found success in that. And I was like, you know what, if this is going to help propel what I do, uh, market myself and also be able to, uh, promote what we do as physical therapists, I'm going to continue this. And so I, I feel like I've been on and off on social media, but been very consistent, at least in the past year and a half. Perfect. And another question for the both of you, um, I'll start with Dr. Malik again, but right now, currently, what is a normal day looking like for you? Um, well, as of now, I'm sort of in between clinic work, but typically it was um, part-time in the clinic, part-time with my own virtual patients on my with myself and at home, and then a day, day and a half of like just content sort of creation. But realistically, I'd say like two, one to two hours of my day is kind of inputted in to try to keep up with social media if I'm being really consistent. I definitely prioritize my weekends and I sort of take time off because I need that. I'm not someone who tries to be on all the time, but I, I try to share a significant portion of my day and be active and use the app as a as what it is. Um, but typically it's, I'd say, I'd say like, 60% patient care and business work, maybe like 30% social and emails and that kind of thing. And then the remaining life, workout, eat. <laughs> Definitely need to schedule some time for yourself in the day too. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> and Marvin, how about you? What does a day look like for you usually? So I work with a uh, local hospital system um, and I, in, like I said, in orthopedics and sports medicine. So I am full-time, full-time uh, physical therapy. Um, I mentor for our sports residency as well. And so, but that goes and that fits into our work schedule. So whether I'm doing lecturing or I'm uh, carving up some space to do some one-on-one -on -one mentorship time, uh, that's all out in the 40 hours of, uh, of work time. Uh, and just like Lieta was saying, um, I, I have to kind of figure out the times when I have to film or edit or do some research on content. Uh, at first, I'll tell you guys, at first it was really tough because I didn't know how to navigate all that stuff, right? I would fit in recording time whenever I could or uh, I wasn't very regimented or disciplined, I guess, uh, or scheduled, I'd say. Uh, with my recording time, with my editing time. And after I started learning the um, the algorithms and the the ways to edit and become, you know, learn that learning curve uh, for each app, I was able to be a little bit better on scheduling my recording time. So what I'll do now is on the days that I'm not working out after work, I'll record after work, right? Um and uh, on weekends, I may do some research uh, on as to you know some of the content I'm looking for. Uh, but again, I like to spend that time for myself um, and to take care of things because life comes before content creation. So, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, just a reminder: anybody who is viewing online, uh, if you have any comments, uh, any questions you'd like to ask drop them in the comments and I'd be happy to ask our guests for you. Uh, so next question I have for Dr. Malik, what content do you, that you post, do you feel your followers respond to the most? This is interesting because I feel like it's sort of evolved over the last year and a half. Um, I think a little while ago, I was really surprised at what percentage of my followers are actually PTs and PT students, I was like, what? <laughs> what are you? And I, I was kind of honored. I was like, well, you're learning from me? Like, why are you following me? But then as people, I started figuring out why it was just like I follow other BDs. Like, we do like to learn from each other. Um, so it ranges. I think a large portion of my following is the active person who knows their body pretty well. They're not exactly a beginner. They might be pretty high level in their sports or they're trying to be really high level. They're all really they have good body awareness already, at least for the most part. Um, and so they are taking that active approach. So when I share content that is specific to an activity, 
creativity or that's unique and things that they can apply to their daily life. I find that that does really well. The other side of things is the content that resonates with PTs and PT students, which is more just PT focused. So the struggles of like the common pain points of us as physical therapists, whether it's dealing with private clinics or insurance, or we're all gonna go through the, when you're just finding a job and how to learn and how to find your own voice and your own treatment style as you, I mean, I'm several years out now and I feel like I'm very different in the way I think and what I believe in and my and what I truly stand for versus when I was a new grad, which is fine and that's supposed to happen. But I feel like we all sort of live that. And so that resonates really well when I share it. And me, I forgot to mention, I'm an adjunct faculty member too. And so when I work, share things like that, the students, really respond to it the pts the and in the community respond to it so it's, it's there's like two kinds of people i think so depending on who it is content yeah definitely marvin if you'd like to add to that too um after looking on instagram at both of your pages i feel like you both take a awesome approach and you do it a little differently so if you'd like to kind of um, yeah. think about how you respond yeah. So personally for me, um, I try to put out stuff like it's like skits and funny things where again, a lot of success comes from either usefulness or relatability when it comes down to social media content. So, um, I try to, if it is one of those things where you talk about, um, mobility or, or exercise or just rehab concepts, then those are, those are also very educational. That's good. And what I try to do as well is I'll do that. Um, and then I'll also do the relatable posts where it's either talking about the struggles of seeing more than two patients per hour, which some clinics, uh, that's how they conduct, right? Um, or it's debunking certain myths that are out there in the fitness and health realms. Like what role does fascia play? You know, because fascia is a huge buzzword and um, not to tell you guys what I think or anything, but just to kind of debunk some things and bring up some discussions in, uh, in the social media platform, but do it in an entertaining way, right? Not doing it in a way where I'm trying to offend somebody or offend a group right. of people, but, um, putting out the content where I can have that discussion, talk a little bit about the research and still provide some funny or entertaining way of doing it. Yeah, that's key. I just want to piggyback off that really quick. And the way you, I also very much try to convey <laughs> the overall feel. I feel like people who are searching for advice, if they are a patient, um, in the worst case, in the most uncomfortable case, they're already in pain. They may not know where to look. They may have never even seen a physical therapist. They've never seen anyone. So at the very like worst case scenario, they maybe they are anxious. Maybe they are fearful. Maybe they're really nervous about what they're about to read on the internet, which we all know how that can go. Um, yeah. So most, if not, I think all of my information, I try to put very gently, just how we would with a patient, we are being mindful of our words. And then if I can like put some humor onto it, pain is scary enough, injury sucks enough. If we can just smile a little bit through it, if not, that's just this much of your day that you learn something and at least point people in the right direction. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here to fix anything. I'm not here to diagnose anything. I'm not here to tell you exactly what to do. But if I can direct you to the right direction with a positive mindset, my job is done. Yep, agreed. We actually have a question from the audience and touched on it a little bit in that, in that last question. But um, how do you navigate questions about bad information that viewers are getting from social media fitness influencers? Um, so Marvin, if you'd like to start. Um, sure. So I have a, a perfect example that I can just think of right now. So quote unquote, bad information would be um, that this posture is going to give you neck <laughs> pain. I think we all know this, right? But this is something that it has evolved as the research and evidence has come out. So whenever I do see somebody and, you know, recently Instagram has done this where they put the, the hashtags that I'm following they put it at the very top of my feet. So I'll see a lot of stuff on posture. Yeah, I've noticed that. Some of the stuff is very interesting, the posture stuff that comes out, right? So if I, so if that's something that you, you have come to terms with and you're like, you know what? The research is out there. This is what the latest information says, that posture doesn't necessarily lead to pain. And if you see somebody who posts something like that, 
there are a couple ways that you can do it. Now, personally, what I would do, I would, if I'm truly posing that question, I would say, hey, could you please state some information or some research that, that backs this? If it is a topic that I'm not really sure about, but if it is something like posture, then I'll say, hey, I think the information is a little outdated, but those exercises, they look great, right? Because you don't want to, I feel like there's a huge part of social media and, and it's very easy to bash people on social media, right? Because we sit behind the keyboard and that's where we're not challenged face to face. We're not in a discussion where we're talking to this person. And so the the identity of the person is left behind, but the content is out there and we can quickly say, hey, no, I, I don't like this. I'm gonna tell you how I feel. So you can either get into their comments or I, what I prefer is getting into their DMs and saying, hey man, I saw this post, loved how it looked, blah, blah, blah. But I gotta tell you, that's a little outdated information. We can't sit there and say that posture is going to correlate to pain, but you know what? Maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, certain exercises. If you did want to work on postural muscles, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, how you approach that I, I think has to be done tactfully. And um, we have to remember to be compassionate because that's, we represent not only ourselves, but our profession as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, in that, and to not to, kind of approach it in another way i don't if it's not someone i see I, I don't go around like looking for misinformation to like comment on it i i'm very much kind of stay in my lane and own my lane in a way that like look i'm not here to take anyone down if i see that it's wrong because i don't i literally don't have time to do that <laughs> but i can do all i can on focusing pushing out the right information and supporting others who do the same. Um, so that I can do and that I spend more time. I think it is um, beneficial. I think if there's something that's very grossly misleading on, for example, TikTok or whatever, if I have the time, I'll post something that's a little bit, um, I'd say professional in the fact that kind of like Marvin said, like, hi, like PT here. Actually, it's not that bad. Like X, Y, Z, this is why. But like, I like what you're I like what you're trying to do with this in a way if it's hopefully not too fear-mongering or um, that kind of clickbaity type stuff but i think a lot of the times i'll get messages from people that send me videos that other people have posted and they'll ask me like what do you think of this and like for example the cover is like a hundred do 100 reps of these and your back pain will be gone um no <laughs> just point blank no <laughs> it's not that simple if pain really was that simple, I don't think any of us would have jobs and this career wouldn't exist. So yeah. um, I just, I vaguely, t I kind of laugh and I'm like, hey, honestly, it's not that simple. And here's my take. And I wouldn't, I would take everything that you read with a grain of salt. It's, right. yeah, it's, it, it is on us to, I see a comment to fight misinformation. And that's why you have to say something, but more so I'm, I'm not gonna go police things because that's not my job right now. My job is to, to share my page and to share the right information. And if and when I see something, when it comes up, I'll step in. But like, I, I it, if I had to go around, that'd just be so hard, I feel like. And uh, so really and, focusing on putting out the right stuff. Yeah, and just to, just to add on to that, there are accounts that will find certain misinformation. Oh yeah, they, they're there. <laughs> we, know, we know some and, of those guys. Yeah, and I like, <laughs> Thank, thank goodness that they're out there doing. I just personally like I, I don't have the time. I can barely right. find time for lunch some days. So that's just yes. me. <laughs> but but it does get frustrating, right? Because you know, yeah. as uh, somebody who's as a layman who's looking on social media for answers, when they see uh, conflicting information, they're saying, "Wait, posture doesn't lead to pain." But then I see how this guy's posture got better, and then he's even reporting how he uh, how he's not painful anymore. Clearly, somebody's saying the right thing, somebody's saying the wrong thing. So it, it, it does get very, very tough. And I feel for students as well, because that was one of the things that one of the big questions yeah. I get is as a student, how do I know what to believe? How do I know what to look for? And how do I preach the right information? Uh, because either I'm getting some information at school, but then when I see the research or what I see on social media, it's a little bit different. And right. um, it's, it's a very tough it, it, it's tough, right? It's a, it's a difficult way, uh, area to navigate when you get so much information, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so it looks like we have another question from the audience. Um, so how do you guys stay on top of posting things every day? And do you have a posting schedule? So let's start with Dr. Malik, if you'd like. Um, I do I have a posting schedule. I have, I have like a posting time frame. I think more so I'm really not that um, like three o'clock, boom, I'm on and posting. That's not, my days are pretty fluid as someone who does practice on her own. And then I'm also in clinic part-time. So not really, I have an idea for what I might share every day. Whether or not I get to it is a different story. <laughs> um, and I think if I do post, I just try to make sure it's somewhat during business hours. For me personally, between like 11 and three works well or, or like after five. Um, and I just try to get to it. I don't stress myself out to the point of like, if I don't get this up, I'm screwed. That's not, if I, if I get to it, it's great. I try to be consistent, but I probably hit like, like five or six days out of the week um, because I do take weekends off <laughs> for the most part. And how about you, Marvin? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, Emilio. Um, so as far as what Lieta was saying, it's very, I'm, I'm right with that, right? Um, you've got to be, there has to be some level of consistency. Um, but for me, I think like at first I would just post whenever I could, because I was like, I'm not really sure if these are going to even catch on. Um, one of my posts on TikTok, one of my first posts on TikTok got to like 2 million. And I was like, okay, I like this. This is really good. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep doing this. Right. Um, and, and so when you see a, a lot of response and stuff to a post, you're going to want to be like, okay, maybe you want to post more, but even if you don't find that engagement as much as you like, just know that you have to find some kind of consistent schedule, um, that's doable for you, whatever is sustainable for you, for your mental health, for your load, you have to make sure that, uh, that's what you want to stick to, right? Some people, if you can knock, um, a video out, a post out every day, do it. If that's sustainable for you. I personally cannot do that. I, I just don't feel like I have enough time. I don't have enough. Um, cause I do a lot of research. I try to put articles and stuff in my caption. Um, yeah. so I don't have as much time to put that in. So my goal is two to three times a week, preferably three times a week, but two to three times. If you, um, if you start a business page, you can figure out the times that you need to be posting that are most active for your followers. And there are a lot of other tips like hashtag tips, um, the current trends that you can use that are all very helpful in posting uh, and catching some traction. Um, but if you look on, maybe you can YouTube TikTok algorithm, algorithm or Reels algorithm, and they'll say, be as consistent as possible and post at least once a day. Or if you can't do that, then figure out whatever schedule is good for you. I would just add, if you do, I would... Um, I would don't get too hung up on trying to like figure out social media as it is to just make sure you know why you're doing it and stick to that because this stuff can get draining and you hear it all the time from non PT influencers or regular, the whole world gets really drained with it. And there are people I, I can, they burn out and it messes with their mental health. Like don't get caught up in trying to figure it out to grow for the numbers. That is my like biggest piece of advice. It would, it's just, it's not a good thing to bank on because then you'll forget why you're doing it, which I hope is for good reasons, which I guess I don't know your reasons that you'd want to do it, but for, in terms of elevating the profession, trying to put out useful and helpful information to try to make us as physical therapists look what we do for the public and encourage people to see us. Remember, just like, just share the, share good stuff that will drive people to thinking differently about physical therapy or to maybe take an active step in their recovery process, whatever it may be, but consistency and value usually um, wins with most of just trying to figure stuff out because there's these apps are constantly changing, constantly. And it'll just, I've been there. I'm like, what is going on? Like this used to be like, this was a good time and now I don't have this yes. feature and that, it's, it can get stressful. So mm -hmm. just be, mind that it's fluid. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you both. Um, so real quick, just some announcements. Um, so first announcement of the night is that APTA Reach 100 student recruitment campaign started in February. 
Um, so this is a student membership challenge that's a nationwide contest for physical therapy education programs. Programs that enter the challenge and have 100% membership of their students by March 31st will receive free access to the new APTA telehealth certificate courses. So if you search REACH 100 on APTA's website, um, there's more information there for you. And lastly, there is still time to register for CSM On Demand. So APTA CSM On Demand starts on March 1st. So you'll get access to more than 100 sessions, digital posters, and the chance to earn CEUs. Um, if you don't need the CEUs and you'd like to register still, you can re register at a reduced rate. So during the month of March, you'll have unlimited access to all on-demand content. Um, so if you go on to APTA's website, first thing when you enter the website, there'll be a green banner at the top that says register now if you're interested. So back to some questions. Um, next question is, what was your first post that took off? So when you were saying, Marvin, that first post on TikTok that you had that kind of took off and made you really excited to post more? Oh, yeah. So that one was, um, it was of me dry needling, performing dry needling on my leg. Because I was like, man, I wanted to do some dry needling on my leg. And I was like, you know what? What if I film it? And I filmed it and uh, put it up. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to edit it to make sure it looks kind of interesting. And um, got to like 2 million views. And I was like, whoa, this is this is crazy, right? Um, and there have been a couple that have done that, uh, that have either gotten close to a million, um, or, or like right over it. And, um, it's, those are the ones that's like, oh, wow, this is, this is, this resonates with people. And it kind of helped me realize like what content, um, that my following or my audience would like to see, uh, it helps me tailor the, the kind of content that I create. And Dr. Malik, for you, did you have a post that kind of took off? Um, I think one, one, yeah, there was one that stood out to me and it was about uh, knees over toes and the concept of that being um, not a, not something that's safe. And I just took, it was a, it was a skip format and it was me, the patient being, I was told never, never do this. And then I demonstrated a an awkwardly sequenced squat without my knees going over my toes. Um, and then the caption was in depth about, you know, how this is. And the rest of the video was just pointing out that it's functional, i.e. stairs, downhill, that kind of thing. And just not to demonize the movement and the fact that while knees behind toes has its place for certain exercises, especially whenever your intent with a goal is totally fine, reverse lunges, Spanish squats, these are all things that keep the knees behind the toes. But in terms of daily life and general function and general knee health, it's something that you'd want to train. Train. So this took off. I think it. I think I had like four hundred thousand likes or something on Instagram, and that was sometime last year. And I was like, "Whoa, is this what the numbers are supposed to look like?" So that was probably the biggest one. Awesome. And the next question is: um, I'll start with Marvin again. So we're, we're chatting a little bit about this earlier, but so for students who are still studying PT, when it comes to social media, would you, what would you recommend for branding to wait or to start now or how to get started? Put your books away, get on in front of the camera, do it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So we were talking about this earlier. We were talking about this earlier, but uh, studying comes first, right? You are in your physical therapy program to become a doctor of physical therapy. So that needs to come first, right? Um, please, please, please don't think that you have to get started on the social media journey um, or the content creation journey at this point, because it, that is not true. If anyone says you have to do this now because the algorithm will forever change or something like that, it is not true. Um, do it. I, what I suggest is if you wanted to, let's say, if you're a student and you're doing a workout and you wanted to put up content about your workout and maybe what muscles you're working, great, do that, right? Um, I, I've talked about this before in an Instagram live. If you're a student or a new grad, take the time to pay your dues, right? Learn what you can learn now 
get the mentorship that you need to get, whether you're in a residency or in a mentorship program, learn as much as you can before you put out specific type of content. And, and then I would also recommend staying in your lane when it comes down to that, right? So I'm not going to put out nutritional content because I am not a registered dietitian. I'm not going to give out um, uh, prescription medication information at all, right? I'm not going to speak about, uh, even within physical therapy, I'm not going to dive into uh, neuro or dive into uh, the pelvic floor rehab uh, side of things, right? Because that's not where, that's not my specialty. Um, and I can easily get corrected. And even if it is something in sports and orthopedics, I like to say, hey, if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I always have that parentheses, right? So what I would say is take your time right now and learn. Um, if you want to even learn what some of the content creators are doing right now on social media, do that. You know, you can always do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, don't be stressed to get started right now because – Again, you're going to feel like, oh, man, I should be doing this now, but it'll always be there in the future. I agree. Um, social media is not going anywhere. And chances are it's going to be another app or another type of media that's going to be important, whether it's video or short form video or whatever it is. As a student, um, you your job right now is to pass your classes, graduate, pass the boards, get your license, and get settled in a job that is hopefully suitable to your learning style and your growth. That is really key. And while it seems simple, that first step, that first foundational job, that's that's a hard one to to feel like it, it, it takes some shopping around. You know, there's you have there might be loans to pay off, you might have the best job that's nearby, like whatever it is, you won't need to focus on becoming the best PT you can be. And I think that being a good student and really learning what you need to do to get there will allow you to get pickier in the future to chisel away what the newer evidence is saying um, because it, it is going to change and if you veer off now when your exams and everything is focused on x amount of evidence and x papers in front of you but you're looking at the newer stuff that isn't quite solid and is challenging views it's going to hinder your progress and Join, get get your DPT first. You want that check mark before you start worrying about the things like social media and, and what other views are out there. I, I would encourage you to, if you're on there, it's great to follow accounts and just, just appreciate different views and the openness and the fact that there are so many treatment styles in physical therapy and everyone thinks differently. And that's, that's the beauty of our field. I think there's so many different styles of treatments and approaches and we all know the whole motor learning. There's how many different types of learning is there? And you can see all of it on social media. And so I think that's interesting. And I think it's good to see, but I would advise against diving in now. There's, well, what's, what's the intent? So if you're a student, I think one thing you can feel definitely comfortable sharing is your journey as a PT student and study tips. And like Marvin said, if you're sharing a workout, like, hey, I'm a PT student. This is what I think I'm getting at. It's making me feel feel great and X muscles and this job and this is, and just dive into your life as a student, by all means, go for it. But definitely don't feel the need to chase numbers right now. It's, it's not a priority. It was never a priority for me. I, like I said, I was kind of thrown into it in the pandemic and then I started doing it. So just focus on getting your feet in and settled first before you, before you dive in deeper into this kind of thing. Thank you. Um, so next question. I think we kind of answered this, um, but if you have any more advice for people who are who are starting this now, um, when you when you first started using social media for your business, how many? Oh, well, we kind of touched on that a bit, but so I know Dr. Malik, you said you kind of started this because of the pandemic and just yeah. kind of got into it, and mm -hmm. so. If you're, when you were just getting started, were you posting more per week um, than you are now or? Yeah, great question. Um, I'm glad you brought that up, Casey, because in the beginning, I, like, I had my own social Instagram just for my, you know, friends posts and stuff like that, but I didn't know how to really use Instagram for a business. So I, and I took a course, I, I've had an idea um, because I, I wasn't completely off the app before, but to really understand like the tips and tricks and 
like what insights are and what hashtags do and different features on the app and how to really utilize that for business. So I took the Movement Maestro's course, which she's great. She actually was a physical therapist. Now she's primarily working um, in Instagram for business. And I, I chose her course specifically because I knew she sort of lived our life and she just sort of got it. So I wanted someone's, I'm someone who likes to study it before I dive in. Um, and so this was really helpful for me. I took a course um, as I was getting my feet wet, as I was trying to stay con consistent to know like, what am I supposed to post on here? Is there is there a method to this? Do I just post whatever? Can I post at 9 p.m.? Like what does, you know, I didn't really know. And now, now, I, now I'm aware. And it, like I said, this is constantly evolving. So at the time this was more accurate, but at that time Reels wasn't even there. So now it could be different. So I recommend definitely uh, taking the time to invest in a course, even if it's a short one, just so that you get an overview of what Instagram is about at this point in time, because they are always changing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great advice, Lita. Um, I myself have learned from like YouTube. Um, like I said, some of my friends who are really good, uh, they've been very successful with social media, whether they're physical therapists, chiropractors, you know, um, fitness trainers, they, they've all done a really great job and they give me advice. And I, I like to say, surround yourself with the people, uh, even if you're not physically surrounding yourself, but f surround yourself online with the people who you feel like are going to help you grow as a content creator, as a clinician. Um, and if you're a student, you know, I, I was thinking about this. If I was a student at the time where social media was popping with a lot of physical therapy information, rehab information, I would take some of the information that I'm learning there, right? Because a lot of very, very high quality information is out there. And I would take that to my professors because I had great relationships with them. And I would say, hey, can I come into the office and can we talk about this? Because my, my, I'm getting a little confused as to what I'm learning, blah, 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 and have good discussions with them. And it can be very, very productive for you and for uh, the faculty member that you're speaking with, because we're always learning too, as instructors, mentors, right? So yeah. um, it would have been great. It would have been great for me as a student to do that. Um, and, you know, ask questions in the comments, man. These are people with a ton of, ton of information. And this is the first time that you have direct access to these content creators, to these, um, you know, whether they, uh, have their own method or they are very big in manual therapy or, or whatever it is, you can reach out to these guys directly and speak to them. And, and like we said before, so take all that in, um, build relationships because the opportunities are there for you. And then when you find your place to create content, you can do that. Um, and, and, and another thing that I want to share is there is no space, no matter what you're putting out again, you're representing yourself your field, your local physical therapy association and the APTA. So there's no space for misogyny. There's no space for racism. There's no space for homophobia, none of that, right? So that goes by, that's the very basic, right? Because we see this stuff online and it is very, very disheartening, whether it's from the rehab side or the fitness industry, we do not want people like that representing of what we do. Um, and also bullying, online bullying is just, it's just not yeah. okay everybody's going to have their own take on that on how aggressive they can be. I used to be a little bit more aggressive and then I found out that's just, that's not the way to conduct ourselves because again, there is a person behind the keyboard. So just a couple of things. I know that's kind of sporadic, but um, a couple of things that I had to just, you know, speak about. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Marvin. I think in the, in the discussions of like, wow, this is great. Like how are you using social media? People forget about these key components and, this kind of, unfortunately, in this day and age, this type of behavior still exists, um, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to someone that's, it's just, it, it's there. The misogyny is there. The bullying is still there. So you really, really, I encourage, if you're going to be online, know that you have a responsibility. We are a well-respected profession and we're trying to become more respected. So bullying someone out of their beliefs or shutting down a post because you don't agree with it in a way that's obviously unprofessional, just don't even go there. I would, there are ways to articulate things professionally. And this comes to the point on somebody had mentioned misinformation. There's two ways to go about it, right? You can, con you can di have a dialogue with that person in the DMS, even a, even a good conversation in the comments, but to leave a comment that is just plain rude, that does nothing for our profession. 
other than no. to show people that we still don't agree on stuff, which they already have probably experienced. So, so really take that to heart. And that's why um, Marv and I were talking about just misinformation and putting stuff on there. Like there's, you guys stay professional. This is, we're trying to do something good for the field of physical therapy and encourage people and to show them that we really are evolving as a profession, even though at different speeds and different, whatever it may be, but there's definitely no room for that misogyny, that unprofessionalism, that bullying, sexism, shut it down. It's 2022. I'm a, I, that's a hard, hard pass on my, on my end. If someone does write that, I either, I pretty much will block them immediately or I'll message them in the comments if, if I feel like leaving that there, if it's not that bad and I feel like it won't um, harm someone else. But I will, I will openly say that that will not be tolerated on my page. My page, my rules. I can't, I can't control the whole environment, but this, this spot, I can. <laughs> Amen. Yep, one hundred percent. I, I, yeah, absolutely agree with that. Um, and, and, and to add on to one of your points of, you know, speaking with uh, tact, speaking professionally, is you know, think about any situation when you've been approached very aggressively how did you respond did you did you respond compassionately or did you get defensive so how so you have to think about how when you comment onto somebody's post and 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 bring up discussions you have to think about their response to you if they come at you aggressively and respond aggressively you you have to understand that it's because of how you approach them in the first place right and so we again we have that responsibility to um and some people won't listen to that and they'll say, I'm going to do what I want. Right. But uh, for me, uh, if I'm giving out that advice, it's going to be, you know, you have that responsibility to be professional. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you both for, like Lisa said, you're amazing ambassadors of the profession. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Couldn't agree more with everything that you said. And, um, and a question from the audience again. So we, what do you guys consider successful social media? So um, considering followers, likes, sponsorships, creativity, um, what is your idea of success in terms of those things? Um, if you'd like to start, Dr. Malik. Sure. Um, I think that totally depends on the person running the page. Uh, for me, success means I've built a community that knows who I am what I'm about and is there to learn if and when I'm seeking out partnerships that do well and they're mutual and the, I agree with them and aligns with me and my brand and what I believe in, that's considered successful to me. Money is always a little bit nice to have on the side, but again, at what cost you want to be a little bit mindful of that. It's really easy. There are tons of companies on there that will gift influencers something for a post what is your time worth? Usually not something free. So just be mindful of that. Um, th so that's something I think creativity is definitely, it totally depends on the person. It's what are you striving to be online? Um, but I think for me personally, I find that I would consider my page successful. If if I'm figuring out the app for my own sake, then, then I, I'm happy. But more so if, if my message is getting across and my people are on my side and understanding and learning with me, that's a win for me. Like you can call numbers successful all day long, but I've seen, I will emphasize that you can have a page with a lot of followers and that person not be successful and someone with a lot less followers and be really successful with other aspects. So numbers isn't everything by no means. Definitely. Marvin, if you'd like to add anything to that. Yeah, no. And, and you know, it, it depends on what success means for you. Does success mean monetary? Does success mean um, promoting the profession like you'd like? Uh, is it marketing your services and your business? Um, for me, it is, I, I, I was just thinking about this. I feel like currently I would say my, my page is successful because I have people DM me and message me and they say, you've taught me stuff that my GP never taught me or my previous PT or when I Googled and, and, and went to Dr. Google, it never told me this. And you've given me this information. Thank you. And this is somebody who's around the world or around the country. And I'm like, okay, to me, that's success because it's doing, it's, it's, it's doing what my passion is uh, in this, in this field, right. right? It's educating people. It's uh, 
encouraging them, uh, empowering them rather than saying that their bodies are weak and frail. I'm saying you're strong and you will be able to get over your back pain, neck pain. This is what the steps that you need to do. So it, it's, it's whatever success means to you is that's how you, you know, I guess define it. So I would say my page is successful. I love the responses I get, the discussions I have, the people I meet. Yeah. Um, I've had some people, uh, some companies send me their products. Like I had a massage gun and a, um, a automatic cupping thing. And they're like, Oh, if you want to uh, review it, we'll send it. Sure. Uh, and I'll review it and I'll say, Hey, this worked great. But at the end of the day, this is, you know, evidence has shown that these are passive treatments, X, Y, and Z. And then you go on to how this can possibly, you know, improve um, somebody's pain tolerance to be able to move, but this is not the fix for that. So I make sure that I'm not losing my integrity, but sure, if you want to send me your product, go ahead. Right. So um, it, it really, and, and yeah, like, like Lieta said, there's nothing wrong with yeah. uh, the financial, the monetary side of things either. So uh, I, I think it is a smart idea to look at um, social media and, and use social media for marketing and for um, business opportunities. But, you know, again, what is your goal? What is your end goal with social media and content creation? Definitely. Um, so and another question, um, kind of going off of that, um, you talked a little bit about brands kind of sending you things and um, wanting you to review them. But um, when these brands do reach out to you, um, either to partner with you or to ask for reviews, things like that, what are your personal parameters for choosing to review that product or to work with that? Um, Marvin, if you'd like to um, continue. Or sorry, Dr. Malik, if you'd like. Yeah, Dr. Malik. Uh, okay, I'll go first. Um, my first and foremost, I, I will not, um, at this point, with all the stuff I have going on, I don't accept, I'm not accepting like gifted campaigns, but if and when that does, um, I make sure that the the uh, supplier or the company or whoever it is, um, is aware that I'm, I only share with my community what I believe in um, and, and, I, and I'm not accepting it um, and promising that I'll share anything. This can, that's, that can be up to you, but personally, um, if someone wants to send me something, I'm happy to try it out, but no guarantees I can get to it because I, I have my content. I have my, it's essentially like a second business page for me. So I'm not going to be pushing out like, you know, supplements or whatever, whatever it may be, but I'm happy to try it for myself and just to share my experience. So I kind of yeah. make that clear. And if they're in agreement, then we move forward. Um, or if I have a better idea of a, something that I can do with something that I do align with um, then for a longer partnership or a bigger term partnership, uh, like, for example, I partner with Guy M, who I have their yoga mat, I have all their stuff, and th that's been really great. And that just aligns because it's equipment I use, it's stuff I can show in my videos that it's not like I'm trying to just sell a product, but I'm actually using it with, with using my yoga blocks and that kind of thing to demo and whatnot. So that's that's my initial approach at this point in time. Definitely. Um, Marvin, if you'd like to add. Yeah. Um, kind of like what Leah was saying, you know, I'll have um, companies offer to send me some stuff. And if it's something that's just way out of left field and I'm like, uh, I don't think I want your red light therapy thing. I'm okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pass on that. But if it is something that I might uh, find some use in, I'm like, you know what, let me see what you have. If it is something that, um, like one of the companies that reached out to me was Lululemon uh, to partner. And I, I was like, Oh my gosh, I was like a fangirl, right? I, I got, got crazy. Cause I was like, I love Lululemon. I love their product. I love wearing their clothes. I work out and all their stuff. Um, and so I was like, yes, absolutely. You know? So, uh, and they're a great company from what I can tell um, with great values. And so I was like, yes, I'd love to do that. But you know, to each their own, uh, if, if that's what you want to do, if you want to do the supplement stuff, you can do the supplement stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. There is a, it's, it's a little bit of work to go into that because you don't want to just accept any product and be like, this pre-workout is so awesome. It helped me lose five pounds or something like that. Don't, don't, you know, don't mislead the, the, the public, but if that is something that you want to try out then go for it, you know? 
I, I will add to that. Um, if and when you do this, this actually more goes into more of the actual influencer side of things, which I never ever considered myself until I realized that's kind of what this kind of is. Um, but there is a world of how to manage that, like brand partnerships and leveraging your social influence and your usage rights and your time and your money. And this is all, that's something completely separate from physical therapy. So I won't dive too far into it, but um, like, for example, I, I work with Athleta on their, in their Athleta Well community um, that's online and I'm their physical therapy guide. So I, as part of my, my contract, I, I'm a little bit limited in how much I can promote other athleisure and that kind of thing apparel wise. Um, so you have to be mindful of what you can't just partner with a bunch of stuff and have them all be okay with it. This is just a fine print that you should try to look into Again, it's a completely different world than physical therapy, but it is part of the social media space. So if that interests you, I would recommend working with someone who are doing the research, working with a brand manager. There are people that you can hire to help you navigate that so that your time is compensated appropriately. Great point. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, so a question I'd definitely like to ask both of you, um, Marvin, if you'd like to start. So what are, what are some of your goals for 2022 moving forward when it comes to your social media platform and how it's plan, you're planning to have it influence your PT practice? So um, one of the positive things I've seen is since I work for a hospital-based system, I'll have people reach out to me and they'll be like, okay, so where in Houston are you? I'd love to come out and see you. I'd love that to continue to grow because when you know somebody's reaching out to you via social media, they are highly motivated. They want to get better. They understand some of the information that you've been putting out. So they feel like they have a connection with you and they want to come see you in person to, to get treatment from you. I love that. I love highly motivated, working with highly motivated individuals, athletes, and I want to continue that. And I want that to continue to, to, to go, you know, to increase into the future. Um, I want to continue to put out good information. I, I will be making a little bit of a shift here. Um, because I love my skits. I sometimes I'll watch my skits and I'll start laughing, you know, at my own stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. But um, you know, changing it to <laughs> more like additional educational stuff. I love it, you know. Like I'll get on, like I'll rewatch what I made and like edit it. And I'm like, oh, this is hilarious. I love it. So um, uh, <laughs> masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Picasso. But uh but uh and uh and and also to reach out to more people. Um because again, the, I feel like over this past year, I've met so many, so many individuals in the rehab world. Uh, one guy from uh, Canada, uh, a couple of guys from the US, some guys from the UK. And it's just very interesting to see how the rehab world, um, how they mesh and how we uh, as a collaborative can put out common information and promote each other. I just love it. Love it. Love it. Because I feel like COVID has, has, has done that, right? Because yeah. we stayed home and had to create content and stuff, but um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. The opportunities and, 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 the, and the, the crazy thing is you can always have a plan for what you want. And then something comes from left field and you're like, Oh my God, this is an amazing opportunity. I didn't even know that yeah. this would be possible. Right. And so uh, hopefully more of those pop up. I would love that. Yeah, I agree. There, I've. If there's one thing that 2020 and 2021 taught me is that you can't really plan for anything. <laughs> you can try, but life is just so unexpected in a good and a bad way sometimes. But um, one thing social social media has brought a lot of opportunity for me starting from the pandemic. So the networking, even my last job, the Athleta Well campaign, this, being able to network with other professionals and meeting people in really high level spots via social media and having that network at, when you didn't even mean to. Um, I've been approached to write certain things. I've been approached by a lot of an, an amazing amount of publications from Oxygen and Women's Health and Shape. I'm just like mind blown because when I was a student, I was always reading them thinking, yeah. oh, look at these amazing women that they're quoting. Like, that's so inspiring. And now, now I'm the person that's getting interviewed. So it's and it's all because of the way you present yourself online. Like they found me through my writing and through my my captions and my ridiculous skits and my videos and exercises. Like there's, you will, I think just 
more of me trying to be myself, but also do this whole elevate the profession, share my beliefs, share my ideas, because I've figured <laughs> apparently it's working. And I, I don't know, I just, I think more of that and continuing the network, like Marvin said, I think when going back to the, the, just the content, I will encourage you to be yourself. You'll be surprised at what resonates with people and you may not, it, it's, it's really easy to just put out the content, right? Like the exercises and the facts, but like showing your face and showing your personality somehow I'm news to me, it gets through, but it, and it's, <laughs> it just makes it a lot more fun. When someone was like, I can tell you have a good personality. I can tell your personality. I'm like, how can you tell my personality? You don't even know me, but apparently <laughs> through your videos, through your stories, it, it really does come through. And I'm like, Oh, I think it's, I think I can figure out someone's personality in a slight sense. So just really appreciate that to be yourself and you never know what might pop up. So just put it in there and, and just see. Yeah. Do you, man, do you be, yeah. you? Uh, and, and that was one of the things that I, when I first started, I was so, it was funny. Like I had maybe a thousand followers and it's not even about the number, but I was so worried about what like 10 or 20 people would think about my content if I put myself out there and, and actually was vulnerable, uh, whether it's on stories or creating yeah. content. And I had to get out of my own head for that, get out of my own way and say, you know what? That's not the goal. The goal isn't to think about what other people are going to think or judge me. It's going to be about the content that I'm putting out and the opportunities that come with that. So. That's amazing. I'm excited to see what both of you do this year. <laughs> Who, who knows, Casey? I literally couldn't tell you. At this point, I'm just like, whatever happens. <laughs> whatever happens, happens. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So I think I have one more question for the two of you to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, so I'll start with uh, Marvin. What advice would you give someone who's, who is a PT or PTA wanting to get involved and starting a platform on social media? Um, so, okay. Great question. Um, I would say number one, um, find out who your audience is, right? Like, uh, what kind of content do you want to put out there? Right. Um, what I suggest is put something out there that you're passionate about, right? Because that's going to be the easiest way for you to kind of dive into it and be very consistent if it is something that you're very passionate about. So some things that I'm passionate about are educating the public, kind of like debunking certain things, um, obviously exercise instructions, and kind of helping the new grad or the PT student navigate their way uh, into the profession. And so I'll kind of, uh, I'll, those are the audiences that uh, over time I've figured out are where I, you know, what I want to talk, who I want to target to. Um, and so find out who your audience is um, and also find out what you're good at. Okay. So if skits are not what you're good at, don't do it. Right. So uh, I'll see some, every once in a while, some choppy skits and I'm like, okay, that's, that, that was a good one, but they could, maybe they could do something else. Right. Or if, if you're in a very dimly lit room and you're like, this is shoulder flexion, like, get creative. You know what I mean? And uh, I love what Lieta does like with different camera angles, transitions, um, stuff like that. And it takes time and there's a learning curve to it. But once you get started, find out what you're good at, do your research. And I feel like that's going to set you off in the, in the path that you want to go. But again, it's not going to happen overnight. So don't expect it to be like, this is the video. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to explode on social media because most likely it won't be. But the more you learn, the more you um, figure out how to navigate that that whole process, the easier it's going to be to put out that information and at least be able to educate um, whatever target audience that you're aiming towards. That's really great advice, Marvin. I actually just uh, I just had this. I just spoke at a tech conference that's going to be airing mid March about this very topic. And it's, I have a few pieces of advice. Um, the first one, be authentic, be authentic. There's so much fake stuff on the internet. We're all tired of it. Every single person that's tired of social media is tired of the main thing. And it's figuring out what's real or what's not real. 
So just do your best to stay as, as true to you and the information that you share as possible. Um, you will not be good at it right away. No one ever is. I, I read a quote once and it was like, you have to suck at something to be good at it later. And it is so true. Like, there, you really, it is going to be hard to figure it out in the beginning. Looking at my first post, I'm like, Ugh, I don't like it at all, but it is what it is. And I yeah. grew from it. And here we are. Um, right. I think the biggest thing is to want part of it, be respectful. This is an, it's an online space. The physical therapy world is a lot smaller than you think. Um, just be aware that what you say carries weight when it's on the internet. So really be mindful of that. Um, I'd say talk about what you are passionate about. Similar to what Marvin said, that's going to, it will be the easiest to, to create content off of. And it's a, if you don't figure out your audience right away, that's okay because your audience will likely grow and evolve with your content. Um, but you might want to consider creating content towards your ideal audience if you have one, or if you're just creating content to create create content, then that's fine. For example, if you're a PT student and you're sharing stuff about your daily life, maybe it's other PT students. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. But you will learn to get nitty get into the nitty gritty details as you grow. So really, just it's you can start whenever. Don't rush it now as a student. Be authentic. Talk about what you love. Talk about what you're passionate about. And I'd say just give yourself time and consistency. If, it, if you truly want to grow on the platform, it's, it's going to take a little bit of a constant effort. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you both so much. This has been amazing. And it's, it's clear that you're both very passionate about PT. And I loved <laughs> having this talk with you. It's great that I, I've learned so much. And I'm sure our audience has as well. And thank you both for being so willing to participate. Um, so again, uh, for anybody watching on social media, if you don't follow us on social media, um, our handle is at APTA student members. Um, and then if each of you would like to um, give everyone a little um, shout out to where you can find, or they can find you on social media. And then if you have any closing comments you'd like to make too. Um, you can find me on instagram and tiktok and pinterest and facebook um all at dr malik pt that's d-r-m-a-l-e-k-p-t uh feel free to send me a message especially if you saw me i try i try to stay on my messages and i almost i think i respond to most if not every comment so i'm really active on there feel free to reach out any questions of course just join the party but know that we are rooting for you to finish school strong so that you can join us on this side when you're done. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm right with that. So you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Marvin Jacob DPT. That's M A R V I N J A C O B DPT. Um, I do have occasionally do Twitter and YouTube, uh, or will be doing YouTube, but for right now, Instagram and TikTok are the two that I uh, am very consistent with. Um, and, and just like Leah said, take care of your studies. Um, and, with all this information, if you guys need more advice, more information, you know, again, don't be afraid to DM us. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, or if you need more further clarification on some of the points that we made here, reach out to us because we want you guys to be successful as well. Okay. There's enough room and enough content for everybody to create. Uh, and the more we are consistent with this as a uh, collective, the more that the public will understand uh, and to start thinking of choosing PT first. I will also add one more thing. Um, I thought we, there's, I think there's a total of, oh God, and the double digits of million users on Instagram. There's plenty of space on here. We are, and there's no rush to do it, but we collectively as a profession can do, we're already doing a lot better of getting on the same page and just elevating everything as a whole. So, and I will say just as there is new information coming out, as you're learning in school, not everything you read on school will be what you see online and vice versa. But what you read on school, trust that it it is still the good stuff. It's accredited. It's what's on your boards. So focus on that. Be really good about when you graduate and just know that it will evolve as you go. I actually just yesterday posted something, um, posted a video on just things that I view differently, even in the last five years. 
And it was because it was taught differently five years ago. And that's normal. It's very, that's the best part about physical therapy that it is consistently getting better and better and better. And it's not a bad thing. So just be ready to be open when you graduate, but be really good about what you're reading right now. Awesome. Well, thank you both again so much. And thank you to all of our viewers. And I hope everybody has a great night. Thank, thank you, Casey. Casey. Thanks, Marvin. Have a good night, guys. Bye.